Good morning. What a great group. So good to see you here this morning as we gather together to worship on this very last Sunday in November. This year is gone by just like that. It's amazing. It's great to see you here. If you're a guest with us, thank you for coming and worshiping today. And uh, that's why we're here. We're here to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. have several things that are going on in the life of our church, just to make you aware of. I, I know uh, uh, most of you are probably aware that W.C. Hodge passed away uh, this week. His uh, visitation will be tonight at Tudor's from 5 to 8. And uh, the service will be in the chapel at Tudor's tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. And the family has requested, if, if you're interested in pro providing any kind of food items, if you'll take them to Marcy's house, okay? Uh, also, I know that uh, uh, Linda and Jerry, you don't, you don't see them here this morning. They, uh, Parker, their grandson, was involved in a, uh, a little mishap last night where uh, a tree jumped in front of his four-wheeler. And uh, he was... Uh, uh, injured, it appeared to be a little bit worse than it was, turned out to be. God has been very good, and uh, what they thought was a broken pelvis has turned out not to be. And uh, he spent the night at Blair Batson and hopefully get to go home today. But keep them in your prayers. Keep all of those families in your prayers. And I also know that there are other needs, and we'll address those as we have our altar prayer ministry in just a little bit. But uh, it's a great day to be in God's house, and I'm glad you're here. Let's go together to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have in worshiping you. I thank you, Lord God, for who you've gathered here in this place today. Father, there's something you have to say to us. Speak through the music. Speak through the time of fellowship. Speak through your word today. Give us ears to hear, a heart to learn and to, to listen, and then a willing spirit to obey. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good to see you this morning. Welcome to Dry Creek Baptist Church. Take your hymnal, if you will, and turn to hymn 343. 343. Let's sing. Let's sing all five of the stanzas, if you will. Grace that 
situation, some snare, some some obstacle, some some hurt, something that's troubling. Every one of us can can realize that. We've been in that. Even this past week seen things happen where God intervened. God brought us through these things. That's that amazing grace that he's talking about. When we've been there Ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to see God's praise than when we first Let's remain standing, turn to him 250, and we'll sing O Little Town of Bethlehem, and we'll worship with our tithes and offerings for today. 250, all four verses. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light the hopes and fears of all For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. O morning stars together proclaim the holy silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of His head. No ear may hear His coming, but in this world of Dear Christ, intercede. Oh, holy child of Bethlehem, descend over us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas Abide with us, our Lord, Emmanuel. 
call you and Ron, would you come? Today we begin, uh, we're four Sundays out from Christmas, and it's just right around the corner. And uh, today, each Sunday from now till then, we're going to do something very special. And I've asked Daniel and Summer and Rose and Eli and Oren and Chastity to come this morning, and you listen. In this season, we prepare for the coming of Christ at Christmas. Our preparation includes many things. We remember Israel's hope of the coming of God's Messiah to save, to forgive, and to restore. We remember our hope for the second coming of Jesus. We remember our need for a Savior to save us from our sins. By lighting one candle each week over the next four weeks, we are reminded to focus our hearts on the coming of Jesus. Today, we focus on the hope of the coming of Christ, both then and and now.
About 700 years before the first coming of Christ, the prophet Isaiah spoke of the hope of his coming. In Isaiah 7:14, it says, The Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7 says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate, the passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given us, dear Lord. Dear Lord, just thank you for being our counselor and our God and our mighty God, dear Lord, and our Father. Dear Lord, thank you for that peace that you give us. Thank you for being the Prince of Peace, dear Lord. Dear Lord, just, uh, and most of all, thank you for the hope of, of, uh, of a life after, after we, uh, we leave this earth, dear Lord. Thank you for that hope of coming back to receive us as your kingdom, dear Lord. Dear Lord, as we go through this service, dear Lord, I, pr I pray that Brother Joe will, um, that you'll use his words and, and put them in our hearts and apply them to our lives, dear Lord. I ask these things in your name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. A few moments ago when we had our altar prayer, I don't know if you recognize a common call for prayer was for family. All down this side, this side, and in the middle, it was several people asking prayer for their family. And the, if the truth be known, many of us who raised our hand with unspoken prayer requests centered most likely around our family. Here's my prayer for you and your family for this season that we're entering into. I'm asking the Lord for this. I'm asking that this season of Christmas be the most meaningful season that you have ever experienced in your life. And it has absolutely nothing to do with what we do here. But it has everything to do with what Christ does in your heart and in your life. And what you allow Him to do as we celebrate we celebrate the coming of Christ. That's what the Christmas season is about. Think about it. Think about it with me. Go back in your mind to the days of the Old Testament. The days of the Messianic prophecies. The days of when it was spoken of, dreamed of, hoped for. The coming of the Messiah. He would come. They had great hopes they had heard it. They had heard it proclaimed. And they waited. And waited. And waited. Now here's the deal. We have the privilege of hindsight, don't we? When it comes to the biblical truths that we study and that we read, that we know of, is we can look back and we can see the fulfillment of those prophecies that we read about in the Old Testament. Did you catch it, what Daniel read a moment ago out of the book of Isaiah? Where it referred to the fact that, you know, this was uh, the child that would come. It spoke very specifically of, of the Messiah. Those were Messianic prophecies that were foretold 700 years before the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in a little town called Bethlehem. Now, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking there's probably some of you here that think that, <laughs> you know, Brother Joe, this is still, we're still in November. We're barely in November. Brother Joe, Thanksgiving was just last week. Now, why do we have to shift gears and start thinking about Christmas? Well, the truth is, it's been, on, it's been in your face if you've turned on the TV or if you picked up a, 
a newspaper, if you've looked at anything on the internet, it's all been pointing to Christmas for months. And we can get lost very easily if we're not careful that we can get lost in the commercial, commercialization of Christmas and we can miss the whole aspect of the coming of Christ. You say, well, how do we celebrate the coming of Christ when he already came? Well, that's what we're going to do over the next four weeks. We're going to celebrate it. This morning, as Daniel mentioned, that we're going to talk about the hope of his coming both then and now and yet to come. You see, there is a hope. Continuing with the prophet Isaiah, Paul wrote to the church in Rome, and he quoted the prophet and he says this, he says, In another place Isaiah said, The heir to David's throne will come. This is Romans chapter 15, verse 12. It says, The heir to David's throne will come. And he will rule over the Gentiles. They will place their hope in him. I pray that God, the source of hope, this is Paul speaking now, he says to the church at Rome, he says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then, you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. The messianic hope that Isaiah spoke of. He says that he will come, the heir to David's throne will come, and he says that he will rule. He will have complete authority. He will rule over the Gentiles, over the world. And it says that their hope will be placed on Him. And so even in that day, where the prophecies were foretold, there was the speaking of the hope of the coming of the Messiah. We look back and we see it, we know it. Paul speaks of it here. He says, he says, first, he says first this, the source of, the source of hope. He says, I pray to God. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you with joy and peace. Remember that. God is the source of all hope. And he goes on and he says that once we've experienced that joy and peace, we've experienced that hope by trusting Him. It's more than a... <laughs> yeah, you've, heard it, you've heard it. People respond this way before when asked a question about... I, I've asked this throughout my ministry a number of times. I ask this question to many, many people. Do you know that when you die, will you go to heaven? You don't even tell you what the common answer is? I hope so. I hope so. What we're talking about here in the hope of the coming of Christ then and now and in the future is more than wishful thinking. You see, we have the evidence of the truth that He came. He came. I think about it being more than wishful thinking and I Think about those throughout biblical history as well as in our the midst today, people who hold on to that hope of experiencing the coming of Christ. And I'm overwhelmed by the fact that it's a, it's a hope that is with great expectation. It's a hope that is a confident hope. And the people that come to my mind, you know, in Luke's Gospel, if you've got your Bible, turn to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. There are two people that Luke chapter 2 speaks of that were waiting. Verse 25, it speaks of the prophecy of Simeon and it speaks of the prophecy of Anna as well. And verse 25 says, And at that time 
this was after the birth of Jesus, is at that time there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly awaiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. The day of the, the, that day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace. As you have promised, I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations. He is the glory of your people Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall, but he will be a joy to many others. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. Can you hear it? Can you see the great expectation of Simeon waiting on the consolation of the Lord, waiting on the Messiah? It had been promised that he would see the Messiah before he died. So there was that confidence. It wasn't a, well, I hope so. It was more than wishful thinking. And then we read in in verse 36 about Anna the prophet. Anna the prophet was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher, and she was very old. Her husband died when they had been married only seven years. Then she lived as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but stayed there day and night, worshiping God with fasting and prayer. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph and began praising God. She talked about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Israel. Do you see it? There was a confident hope in her that overflowed, that abounded in who she, well, what she had experienced and what she seen. It overflowed in her to the point that she shared with others what she had experienced. So we see that here in this passage back in Romans, God being the source of hope, hope being experienced through Him by trusting in Him with more than just wishful thinking, but a a hope of great expectation, a hope of confidence in who God is, and God fulfills His promises. But we also see that there's a hope that overflows. It doesn't just fill. It doesn't just go to the brim. It goes over. It overflows. When you're filled with the hope of God within you, you can't help but talk about what He's doing in your life, what He's done for you. The hope that overflows, and it's through the power of the Holy Spirit that the source of God is within you. He is the source of that hope. And it's left up to us to simply trust that hope. So I ask you today, is that where you're at? Are you trusting in the hope of the coming of Christ? You say, well, Brother Joe, you, you, the way you're talking, it's confusing. I, 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 I'm not sure. You're talking about the coming of Christ, but Christ came. Has He come here? Has He come into your heart? You see, the Messiah did come over 2,000 years ago. And He still comes today. So that's the then. What about the now? How does the hope of the coming of Christ impact my life now? How can it make a difference? Let me ask you, have you ever been to a point of hopelessness in your life? Been there? You ever wonder how you got there? You say, well, you just don't know what I've been through. You don't know the circumstances of what's going on in my life. 
you don't know the experience of, of this season that I walked through where I was hopeless. I want to remind you what Paul says to the church at Rome. He says, God is what? He is the source of our hope. He's the source of our hope. Scott, do me a favor. Turn all the lights out. You know what we just did? We disconnected from the source that provides light. I'm here to tell you this morning, if you are in a point in your life this morning where you feel hopeless, if in your future there comes a point where you sense a hopelessness there. Let me ask you to do this. Check to see if you're connected to the source that provides the hope that you've lost. Turn the lights back on, Scott. You see, I believe with all my heart. I've, I've been there. I've been where I have... And I've, I, I actually prayed through it over this week and thought back in those moments in my life where I felt hopeless. And I, 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 and I tried to get honest and real with myself in that, those moments, those seasons, whether it was a day, whether it was an hour, whether it was a week, a month, a year, whatever the length of time was, I went back and I tried to be honest with myself. Was it because I had disconnected from the source of all hope? And I can tell you truthfully, that is the reason. That is the reason. So if you find yourself today, or in the future, a sense of oh, hopelessness overwhelming your life, stop and check to see that you're connected to the source of hope. How do you do that? How do you stay connected to that source of hope? You reconnect. <laughs> What happened? I asked Scott to turn it back on. He flipped the switch, didn't he? Don't you wish it was that easy with God just to flip a switch? Truth is, it doesn't take a whole lot more than that because God has never left you. God didn't move. God didn't distance himself. He's still right there with you waiting for you to turn and reach out towards him. It's in James chapter 4, I think it's verse 8. It says, draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. You know what, I, I, my first thought is this, if I take a step towards God, He's taking a step towards me. If I take another step towards God, He's taking another step towards me. That's how you reconnect. And some of you are here this morning with that intent to connect to that source of hope. To seek out, to understand, to experience that coming of Christ in your heart and in your life. You see, the messianic hope for today, for right now, gives us power to live in today. Isaiah 40, verse 31 says this, it says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Did you hear that? Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. God can be that source of strength for you today. You can renew it. You can reconnect. It can be restored. Maybe for some it needs to be the very first time that it happens. Where you've invited the coming of Christ to enter your heart and your life and to be your Savior. You see, God 
sent his son, not only as a redeemer that offers hope for today, but he also sent his son as a conquering king who's coming again. Did you hear that? He's coming again. He's coming back. The day will be when he will come. There is going to be a day. Titus chapter 2 verse 12 says this, While we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great, and our great God and Savior Jesus Christ will be revealed. It tells us there will be a day. His glory will be revealed. There's coming a day. It's sooner than you think. I feel it within my heart. He's coming again. The Bible makes it very clear that when he comes, that he's got a plan. There's a plan for you and me. John 14 says this, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. There's more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am and you know the way to where I am going. Do you know the way? Do you? Do you know the way? Remember what what happened when Jesus made that statement in John 14? He said he was speaking to his disciples. And he was telling them that he was leaving, but he would come back. And that's what he's telling us today. He's coming again. And he says, you know where I'm going and you know the way. But there was one that spoke up. (laughs) I could see, he probably didn't raise his hand, but I just see the hand going up. Just waving back and forth. Uh, uh, We don't know the way. Maybe you're there today. Maybe you're thinking, I don't know the way. Jesus made it very plain then, and he makes it very plain today. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one comes to the Father but by me. So have you walked in the way? Have you invited the way into your life? Are you living your life today in the hope of the coming of Christ. In this moment, in this time, in this season, where's your hope? Is it placed in Him and Him alone? How will we know when He comes? The Bible makes it very plain. Matthew 24 says, So if someone tells you, look, the Messiah is out in the desert, don't bother to go out and look. Or look, he's hiding here, don't believe it. For as the lightning flashes in the east and shines to the west, so it will be when the Son of Man comes. Just as the gathering of the vultures show there is a carcass nearby, so these signs indicate that the end is near. Immediately after the anguish of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will give no light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then, and then, at last, the sign that the Son of Man is coming will appear in the heavens, and there will be deep mourning among all the peoples of the earth. You can see that, can't you? Can you see the imagery? The lostness that is prevailing today in our world. They will recognize, they will see this. And then the last sign, the Son of Man is coming and appear in the heavens. There will be deep mourning among all the peoples of the earth. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And He will send out His angels with the mighty blast of a trumpet. And they will gather His chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and the heaven. I'm asking you today, do you know for certain that you're part of the group? Do you know that you know that you know that you've been chosen by God? That you've experienced the hope of His coming in your heart and in your life and you're living it out today.
if you don't have that assurance. <laughs> Here's the real good news. You can have it before you leave this place today. Because he's waiting. Remember I said in James chapter 4, it says that if you draw near to me, he'll draw near to you. And I believe with all my heart that's what God is doing today, right here in this place. God is drawing near to you. All he's waiting is for you to draw near to him. So what's going to be your response? What are you going to say to him today? I invite you today, as we enter into this season of a celebration of the coming of Christ, to experience that coming of Christ in your life if you've never experienced it before. Or if you don't have the certainty of knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have that, that security, that assurance, that confidence. Not a hope so. But a confidence with great expectation that when the day comes and Christ appears and He calls His children home, that you know where you're headed. You know exactly where you're headed. Do you have that great expectation? Do you have that confident hope? Is it abounding in you to the point that it not only fills you with joy and peace as it's spoken of in Scripture, but it overflows to the fact that that joy and peace in you is experienced and seen by those that all around you. In other words, they know the reason of the season in your life. They see the Christ in you, the hope of glory. Father God, I pray in this moment, Lord, that you would draw near and call your children to you. Father, may we be mindful as we walk through this season of Christmas of the coming of Christ. And as we, celebrating, as, we have, as we have celebrated today and celebrated in weeks to come, His coming, Lord God, I pray that first and foremost, if there's anyone here who has not nailed down in their heart, their mind, and their spirit the assurance of having received Christ as their Lord and Savior, Lord, they would come today. Lord, if there's anyone here today that, Lord, has sensed a, a hopelessness in their life and in their spirit, and Lord, they've recognized that they have disconnected from the source of all hope. Father, I pray that you would help to restore that connection right now in this place. So, Lord God, would you speak to each person here today. Bless us, Father, with the confidence and expectation of your coming in this moment, in this invitation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I ask you to stand together, please. Turn to him 762. 762. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day. One who saved me by his grace 
when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be there'll be no sorrow there no more burdens to bear no more sickness no pain no more parting over there and forever i will be with the one who died for me what a day upon his face the one who saved me by his grace 